In a previous video, we declared a variable and set it equal to an SQL statement. This allowed us to insert records into the database, or in other words, create records. That's the C in CRUD. CRUD is an acronym meaning create, read, update, delete. But we do not want to create records in the user table with duplicate usernames or duplicate emails. So let's go up right under the username. Let's declare another variable. Let's call this variable check duplicate username. So this is another query. So let's set it equal to another SQL statement. Select username from our user table. Now we have a where clause where username equals our variable up username, which is the value in our input when we submit the form. Okay, so this is a select statement. It selects data from the database and the WHERE clause filters the data down according to our parameters. In this case, where the username is equal to the input value username. So now let's declare another variable and call it the result or just plain result and set that equal to a function MySQLI underscore query, a built-in PHP function, which we need the connection and the name of our statement, which in this case is check duplicate username. So now let's declare another variable and call it count. And we'll set that equal to another built-in PHP function called MySQLI underscore num underscore rows. That takes the result that we have up above so this counts the number of rows we get in our result. So now let's create a conditional if statement. If count is greater than zero, then we want to do something. Inside curly brackets, let's just copy this code right here. And let's change the message. Username already taken. And then of course we want to return false. Let's also say please use another username. You can say anything you want right here. So do you see how that works? We're checking to see whether the username is already in the database. If it is, then we tell the user to try to find another username. Let's check that out and see if it works. So I'm going to enter my name, a valid email address. That's working, but that's because I had emptied the table. So let's try that again. My name, same email address, submit the form, username already taken. Please use another username. So that's working just fine. So let's do that. Let's choose another username. I'm going to say Eddie2, but I'm going to use my same email address. And you see, I still have the same email address, but a different username. So we have to do the same thing with the email address. So let's go ahead and copy that code so we can use it over again. But we'll just make some changes. Now down below, all the other validation for the user for the email, I'm going to create some comment blocks. And inside this block, I'm going to paste all that other stuff and then change username to email. So let's do that everywhere inside of this comment block. Okay, so let's save that and check it out, try it out. So enter a new username in the same email. Email already taken. Please use another email. So that's working. See if it works when we use another one. Okay, so that's working. 
We are now able to add records to the user table but prevent duplicate username and duplicate emails. So back in the code. Okay, so it's always a good idea to leave some comments. That also lets you know what this code is about for later on, plus it divides the code up so that we can search through it better. Now we haven't done anything to the password yet. We're going to do that in the next video, but I want to leave a comment right here. So what we're going to do is validate the password. We're going to create a password for at least eight characters long. And we also want to make that password contain certain symbols. So we're going to do that in the next video. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.